hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. <laughs> Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. I'm your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me as always, it's co-host Joshua Vosler. Hey, everybody. And sidekick Will Doherty. Hey, I'm not meeting your intensity. Uh, no guests today, just the three hosts and a Mary. We're not doing, well, what's above guest, but below co-host? I'm going to oh, say. Like a regular wife. reoccurring guest? What about friend of the show? Wife. Podcast wife. Yeah. Po- <laughs> <laughs> okay, and podcast in, podcast wife Mary Putnam. Mary in hi. this quadratic relationship. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's what's one up from a thruple? <laughs> what the fuck is a thruple? A three couple. <laughs> <laughs> you you're making this up, no? That's, that's a that's, it's that's a term a for thing? like a polyamorous relationship. No, you would a know three that. per. I wouldn't know that. Yeah, I said you would know that. No, that's the opposite of then what I thought. You said. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a funny word for one more than a thruple. Because the word thruple is inherently hilarious. It's a double date. That's two different couples, though. All right, so obviously it's me and Jimmy. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> so... Host and sidekick, the yeah. main pairing. Just like, right. in, just like in Mario Tennis, it's not... The, the, exactly the, like in Mario the, Tennis. The pairings, the doubles pairings in Mario Tennis, guess what? It's not Mario and Peach, it's Mario and Luigi. Right. Main guy, right. sidekick. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm down. We, uh, Will and I are the Mario and Ru- Luigi of this podcast. Joshua, you are Toad. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Mary, you can either be Princess Peach or Daisy, I think. Um,. Which one should I be? Well, you don't want to be Daisy. I will be the princess. <laughs> I think the last time we didn't have a guest, we talked about video games and... Thrupples. <laughs> and the <laughs> dynamic of the hosts of the show. <laughs> right. That's what we talked about. Uh, hey, guys. If you could log in to iTunes and leave us some positive feedback and click five stars, that really helps us out a ton. I appreciate everyone who's done it so far. We've gotten some really great feedback, and it does help out the show quite a bit. I'm going to read a fun one that we got today, or uh, that we got last week. This is by The Lens, and it, it's titled, It Beats Slammin' Heroin. I'm serious. This show is better than heroin, and I would know I'm someone who used to do heroin. This show is so funny, it actually helped me kick my heroin habit, exclamation point, Thanks, guys. Can we please have more episodes about heroin? Well, I appreciate your feedback, The Lens. Unfortunately, that's outside of our area of expertise, but we can maybe find an addict to come on and talk about it. You're right. We definitely we need more heroin out there. It's really it's time there was a female led Marvel movie. We're way overdue. <laughs> uh, that's right. There you go. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm not. G- I'm give bla- not. <laughs> give Black Widow something to do besides Captain America. Am I right? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anyways, well, let's let, let's get that series passing the Bechdel test. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it surely can't when there's only one woman in the series. More I, on the Bechdel test later. Yeah, I haven't understood a single word. Will has said <laughs> okay, since we started. we're gonna we're I'm gonna we're gonna have a segment later on where we do movie reviews, and I talk about uh, we're gonna review do reviews of Jurassic World and Mad Max. The Bechdel test will be discussed. for a For a movie to pass the Bechdel test, it has to have three qualities. It has to have at least two female characters. Uh, the second quality is at least two female characters have to have at least one conversation with each other, and it cannot be about men. I think that's right. Did I get that right? It ha- yes. There has to be at least – it has to address something other than me- them talking about men at one point. Right. So it can't be about their husbands, or the conversation can't be about who's going to be the next king or whatever the men-centric plot is. So, like, it has to be two women just having a normal conversation. It's a shockingly a shockingly low number of movies and books, like, don't pass it. 
or pass it or uh you know what I mean. <laughs> so a kid, lot tell of them what movies I mean. fail. Yeah, a lot of movies fail the Bechdel test. Anyways, we're going to be talking about some movie reviews later. Hey, we're on Stitcher now. Yeah. So uh, you can listen to us on Stitcher. Subscribe on iTunes. You can download it directly off Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. Anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please uh, follow us on Stitcher. Follow us on SoundCloud. Anything you guys, you know, and it takes 20 seconds to log onto iTunes, write a quick review. Just, hey, the show was great. And click five stars and submit. And that would be super helpful and fantastic. We'd really appreciate it. So th- this tonight on the show is just the hosts and Mary. And we're going to talk. We're going to review some movies. We're going to play a game called Cult or Comedian. I'm kind of excited about that one. I'm going to make some references Joshua doesn't understand. <laughs> uh, and uh, first, I went to a birthday party on Saturday, which happened to be at a strip club. And I want to talk about that. So I had a friend who was having uh, her 30th birthday party. I stress her because for some reason that's important to me. And she wanted to take a group of people to a strip club. I haven't been to a strip club in 15 years. I really had no desire to go. There were actually there were actually two birthdays that Mary and I went to both of them on Saturday. The first one was at a karaoke bar. And then the second one was at a strip club. Neither place that I have any desire to go ever again. <laughs> I used to be a professional karaoke DJ. That's my aversion to that. I just find strip clubs incredibly uncomfortable places to be for a number of reasons that I'll get into here in a minute. But Well, I mean, it's really just <coughs> one main reason you're a decent person. <laughs> well, it's that here, the main the, the main issue for me when when she said that that's what she wanted to do, I was like, I'll go. But I know I'm going to be uncomfortable. And I was really afraid because just intimacy terrifies me <laughs> like with mary who i've been married to for 12 years now or whatever it, it it's fine but with most people just looking them in the eye and exchanging real emotion is so uncomfortable for me i can't stand it you don't do that at a strip club no it's way worse they're naked in front of you which is a weird kind of personal react like I, it makes me uncomfortable i feel like I don't know you that well. This is very strange. I was also assuming that a lot of what was going to happen was going to be similar to the strip clubs I was at 15 years ago in Kansas. And it was not. Uh, Where'd you go? Lincoln, Omaha? We went to the Iowa Playhouse. Have you ever been? Yeah. Hmm. Now, so it's... No. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. It was huge. It was a totally different experience for me. Now, strip clubs that I was at... When I was, you know, 22, 23, and it still seemed like it would be a fun idea. Uh, the the band I was in in college would occasionally play a show, get paid, and then someone would yell like, let's go to the strip club! And then we'd spend all our money. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And then I always, I realized at a certain point that afterwards I never had any fun. Because it just, <laughs> there's nothing erotic about it for me. It's just weird. But strip clubs that I'm used to are, they're dark. There's a stage with a girl stripping down and she does a little dance and then everyone has to give her a dollar. And I, it's just, it, to me, it's the weirdest environment. The Iowa Playhouse is different. So the Iowa Playhouse is huge. It's like a strip club inside an air, like an air, <laughs> airplane <laughs> like hangar. hangar yeah. It's really <laughs> well lit. Like it's well lit. bright. It's clean. It's clean. They have bathroom attendants. It's kind <laughs> yes. of weird. The, the women's restroom wasn't that clean. The the <laughs> men's was pretty clean, and there's a bathroom attendant in there handing out butterfingers and asking for a dollar, which is that was a little strange. <laughs> I would just like wash my hands and then quickly dry them on my shirt and avoid eye contact with that guy because I didn't want to tip him and I didn't want a butterfinger. I didn't want his funky hand towel. But anyways, here's the most important part of it. There is a gigantic stage. It's like a hundred feet long with nine different pole dancing stations on it. So there are nine women on stage at the same time. And at the end of each song, they just rotate one down. So the, at, at, at pole number one, a song will start playing and a girl will climb up and she does her strip tease, whatever. Like she takes off her clothes for the next eight songs. She just stays completely naked on stage. And rotates one station down each time. 
And we were seated, seated at a table <laughs> at the very far end of the stage. So by the time the girls got to us, they were just tired. Exhausted. <laughs> they were just exhausted. And there was no energy put into their, in, into whatever it was they were doing. Like if you're at station like two or three, you might see a girl like climb up the pole and do a flip or something cool like that. And if you're at one, at station one, you see sort of an erotic dance. But at Station 9, you're just seeing a series of tired women just kind of trudge past you and then kind of shake their boobs and take a dollar from a guy and then just kind of bend over and show you their ass and then take a dollar from the next guy. I feel and like you're using the word dance too liberally. There were specific moves that each of them, all of them did the same moves over and over again at every station, and it was not a dance move. It was not to the music. No, but it, it, it was fairly yoga-like. Okay, like, There'd be I like a that. series of things on the, there's like a roll around on the floor thing, yep. and then kind of a spread your legs and bend over <laughs> and stretch. Listen to Mary, Here's... she's taking tap dance lessons now, and she's critiquing everyone's <laughs> dancing skills. Well, there was one, there was one chick that actually moved to the beat, even if she was just like walking around the pole. She was the only one that heard the music. The rest of them were dead inside. Jeez. It, it, so it was so it, but, it was very, very strange but, to me. But, but yeah, here's the thing. Like, we're all, our, our, our standard uh, lineup here, we're all uh, sad, old, married men. <laughs> yeah. Like, watching a defeated woman trudge around, <laughs> like, with that, that should be like, oh, getting it going. I know well, where this leads. Well, and certainly there were guys sitting, like, at the stage, you know, there's chairs, like, right up on the stage, who were very excited at each w woman who came by and would rub themselves in the dude's face and then take a dollar. It was not exciting to me. It was just... Also, it crossed a line. There's an erotic slash intimacy slash now this is like medical line, <laughs> which is like, first of all, I'm not used to full nude strip clubs. And even when I have been to them, very rarely, it's like the dance ends when the panties drop. Like that's the last part of the dance. This, at this place, that happens, and then she stays on stage for another 35 minutes. <laughs> you had a bad time at the best strip club, because you get to bring your own beer. Oh, it's, that's the other thing. It's a $20 cover, but it's BYOB. Right. But we didn't know that you couldn't have bottles, so they, they had to keep our bottles up behind the counter at the entrance, and whenever we, and then they'd give us a plastic cup, and whenever we wanted a beer, we'd have to run all the way, like, go, like, all the way across the airplane hangar and fill up our cup. Uh, but if I, I went again, like I, we would know to bring cans. Yeah, I had my bachelor party there <laughs> and uh, we rolled in a keg. See, that's that's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I yeah, was, uh, my experience with that wasn't and, the most pleasant either. I got pissed off really quick because a buddy of mine that I was working with came and he, we were at one of those units or whatever, one yeah. of the sections, and he kept sliding his belt across. And the stripper would take it, and so, like, my head is almost on the stage. Yeah. And take it and beat the living fuck out of yeah, me. Yeah, that we saw that, that happen. Happened. To a yeah, people. I heard a lot. Yeah. Right? And he, he kind of went around, he waited till the one that was getting the least amount of tips, and she was kind of, <laughs> you could tell she wasn't too happy to be there. Yeah. And she showed up, she's moving around, and nobody's tipping her. And we didn't want to be rude and just, like, get up when she. Because some people were doing that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, the, oh, this stripper. They just get up and they, like, leave her. Well, yeah. They've been doing that. She finally gets us. And my friend, like, slides a belt to her. And no one's stepping her. So she bends me over and starts beating the crap out of me. And then she takes a beer, my full beer, and takes it and pours it down my back. And it goes all the way down my back, down uh. my pants. Uh. And starts beating the crap out of me some more. And I it hurt so bad after I got all wet. I went like this. I stood up and I grabbed the belt. And I'm like, please don't hit me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. one of the security guys is like, hey, you can't touch him. I'm like, I'm just trying right. not to get beat. You yeah. know what I mean? And then I just sat away from the stage and it was just covered in beer and just not having fun. Yeah, that sounds a lot like my experience, except without the beating or the covered in beer. It was just sitting away from the stage feeling awkward. <laughs> because there's a certain point where, a, like, okay, it, it's it's hard to describe this without seeming crude. It's just what I experienced. But 
these women would get to our section and again, they've been moving around for 45 minutes. So they're exhausted and they would stand in front of us, spread their legs and then just bend over. And like, you could see inside of them. And that was not <laughs> sexy at all. It was really, really uncomfortable. I was like, I don't, I didn't like it. I didn't, I was like, just, just put some clothes on. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess there are people who find that exciting. Maybe even most guys. I don't know. For me, it was just, I, it, I didn't there's, like it. There's guys who are like, yeah, I'm really into an, I'm really into a good canal. <laughs> right, <That's> right. <laughs> well, I told Mary later, I was like, if I had been a doctor and had known what to look for, I could have diagnosed them with stuff. <laughs> like, that's how much inside of them you were seeing. And it was... There There were two things that I saw the whole time there that were interesting. Okay. There was the stripper... By the way, this was Mary's first time ever at a strip club. Yeah. The stripper who could move each tit individually. Oh, yeah. She did, like, the muscle guy, like, <laughs> pec flex <laughs> Only deal. they were big boobs. That was okay. pretty cool. That's, yeah, that's awesome. That was fun. Yeah. I ha I got to sit at the angle where I could see the earlier poles, so I got to watch some of the chicks that climbed all the way up to the top and shimmied around and flipped over and held on with one leg. So that oh, was yeah. okay. But the most interesting thing is when I stopped one of them walking behind me in bra and panties and said, Hey, wait, wait, wait. What's that tattoo that's right between your boobs? Because we were having an argument about it. Uh, we were having an argument with friend of the show, Tracy Mock. I claimed that the tattoo was a scorpion. She said, that is a Sailor Moon wand. And she was right. And Tracy was right. <laughs> and the stripper smiled at me when I asked, and it was the only time I saw any of them smile. <laughs> Here's another thing that's different, and I don't know if it's this particular club or if this is just a thing that has changed about society in the last 15 years. But when I went to a strip club, when I've been to strip clubs before, again, it was 15 years ago and it was in Kansas. That might also be the difference. But there were no women there, like in the crowd. There were a lot of women at this club and they were having the most fun <laughs> because if you're a dude and a chick comes over to you from on the stage, you have to sit there with your arms at your sides and you can't really move or do anything. If you're a woman, you get to grab boobs and do any number of shit and they'll try and drag women up on stage out of the crowd and take their clothes off. That was kind of fun to see. <laughs> I, I did enjoy that part. It was like, Bo, I didn't pay for these tits. Like, that's kind of fun. Um, but it, there was a lot. Like, chicks who were there with their husbands and stuff no. were doing that. There's something weird about it. Like, it's not for sexual gratification. Like, right. women going to that strip club isn't, it's just fun and weird and like yeah that's exactly it's, it it's liberating for them to have other people be naked in a weird way i think is it, yeah I, I mean i can't i can't speak to a woman's experience so i'll just pointedly look over i mean <laughs> you're uh you're uh ostensibly a woman <laughs> who, I was, am. who was there i was what was your experience did you have fun um Fun is maybe not the word. I had the same amount of fun I would have had watching an aerobics class with chicks in small tight clothing. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, they didn't have to be naked. It was just kind of made it weird. But right. But it did have to be, it did have to be in a, like, social setting where the purpose for being there was leering at women. So that's why it had to be a strip club for that right. event. Yeah. Right. Right? I mean, I think... I don't know. One of the strippers in the bathroom that I ran into said that it was really liberating to have walked around completely naked in front of people. Things just don't matter anymore. That totally makes sense to me. I, it makes sense to me, too. I do get that part. And I also get that there's... The, I think there's a power dynamic that people get off on, men and women, of just, you know, Haha, yeah. here's a dollar. Dance for me. Well, yeah, but it's but I, I mean I think it's also the opposite power dynamic too, which is, uh, take my money, right? Hit me with this belt. Well, and that, what the, <laughs> um, right? But well, I mean that's the thing. Like I think that there's enough. I think there's also though still enough shame about strip clubs and like 
anything that you can even adjacently call the sex industry that I think people who are there unabashedly enjoying that have enough of a little bit of a hint of, like, shame and, like, societal outcastedness that, right. like, the fact that that's also the kind of person who wants to have a stripper beat them with a belt, that that's just, like, a standard practice in that and, environment. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just a trick. Yeah. You know, you see guys lined up at the ATM getting more money out. And then, you know, they leave and they're just like, there's no payoff or anything. Well, I see. see there's, this is, no, there's nothing. It's just sad at the end. This is the. Like, this after is, you yeah. leave, the, the all the glamour and the glitz and the, light, well, this all is the, the lighting and this the, is the comparison is I made. Gone. This is the comparison I made to Mary as we were leaving. I said that the look in people's eyes there was very similar to what I see at casinos. Because I go to casinos and I play poker a lot. But I don't do anything else there. I don't play slot machines. I don't play table games. And the reason is that the people who go there and do that a lot of the time have this vacant... There's no joy. Like, there's just a vacant workman-like stare. And they're just giving away money. No joy or fun. And I, had, I did have fun. I ultimately had a good time. And I, got, I came away with some stories to tell. And then from there, we went to a karaoke bar... So many oh. dead-eyed people. <laughs> no, exactly the opposite. Like the bathroom was cleaner. People, people, <laughs> people at the karaoke bar were just laughing and carrying on and having like the time of their lives. I mean, it was completely the opposite. Oh my god, <laughs> I've I'm so uncomfortable. I've never gone to a strip club for my own entertainment. The only time I've gone to a strip club is for karaoke night <laughs> right <laughs> okay, obviously right, right. no because i when i was performing and that's it <laughs> no the only time i've actually been to a strip club is when i was delivering pizza here's the thing i hate bars all the time but the thing i hate most about bars at the, is that there's people at them loudly having fun right based on your description <laughs> of the strip club that would be my favorite place to be in the world. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what I want. I want dead eyed, unhappy people just getting. Just there was loud with music. It. Yeah. I put my earplugs right. in when we first walked in and they yeah. stayed in. Yeah, All right. The, the music is thunderous. I mean, they don't want you it's like communicating light show and too sound. well. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, there's a laser light show. I mean, it, it if was. If you talk to the people at your table, you're not paying attention to the ladies giving them money. But yeah, there was certainly a lot of visual stimuli and auditory stimuli. Almost too much to process. The thing that made me so uncomfortable at this strip club is it felt like a total stranger was just telling me all of their secrets. Or like unloading all of their personal issues on me all at once without provocation or being asked. Actually, it was more like I paid money to hear that. And that was like... I did. That's what I didn't like. I just felt like, I don't know you. I don't want to know all of this. It's too much to absorb. I don't, you know, because it just felt personal and weird to me. I don't know. Is that? <laughs> That's weird. It is. It's they're the just, opposite. just naked chicks getting paid to it's be naked. It's the opposite of therapy. You're going there giving money and then other people are putting their problems <laughs> on you. Right. That's what it felt like to me. All right. Let's, uh, hey, let's play a game. This game is called Cult or Comedian. Cold or comedian, who tweeted this? <laughs> yeah, it's not great, but I <laughs> threw that together today. The game is, Mary is going to read a tweet, and we have to guess if that was tweeted out by a cult leader or a comedian. All right, so let's hear one. Since climate change and the global economy now affect us all, we have to develop a sense of the oneness of humanity. This is tricky. Oh my god, that is clearly a self-serious comedian if they're, I've ever heard one. Well, they're they are accepting climate change, but they are also they are also promoting the oneness of us all. Correct. Which seems to be that seems to be religious to me. Oh, I, I mean, or spiritual maybe yeah, some Margaret Cho. Maybe I've just spent too much time <laughs> listening to you made it weird, but like I've gotten a lot of people who've got that like Pete Holmes like doing a lot of yoga, like uh, kind of okay. Deepak Chopra type. Okay, so we're I'm reading a lot of I'm reading L.A. comedian into that 100. percent All right, we'll say comedian. Incorrect. It's the Dalai Lama. 
<laughs> oh, you're calling the Dalai Lama a cult, cult leader. leader. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? We didn't define cult leader. A religious leader is the leader of a cult. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. W- Will seems objectionable. <laughs> You try and find cult I, leaders on Twitter. Who am I supposed to look up? Will is always the rules lawyer for every game. Who did you think I was going to read no, tweets here's, from? Here's the thing. Here's my. Here's the feeling that I'm having with that right now. I don't respect a lot of religions. Yeah. But I'm like, I feel like I'm okay with the Dalai Lama for some reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Was a good tweet. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's hear another one. You got me. You fooled me. Sending thought hugs to all the families of fallen soldiers on this Memorial Day. That's Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds comedian-y to me, but I... I, I It does me too, but I've been wrong once. <laughs> comedian. 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 Kristen Schell. Thought hugs. I feel like that's something that should never be said in <laughs> earnest. That sounds, It sounds all hippy-dippy, and she doesn't strike me as that kind of person. Can you negatively thought hug someone? <laughs> <laughs> That's thought assault. Oh, okay. Technically, te- the, there you you can do the thing that you're describing. The term for that is force choke. For, I was about to go there. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> All right, perfect. Let's give another one. Why I married a black woman? It's not about collard greens. Oh, that is a cult leader. <laughs> it is cult leader. It's way, well, this it's is, way too insensitive. This is embarrassing. Um, that's actually the title of my book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Cult leader trying to be funny. Yeah, I, that's a cult leader, and it is the name of a book. <laughs> Why I married a black woman. <laughs> Who's, wait, there was a link to more information who, about the who, book. Who uh, wrote this yeah. book? John Piper had. The- tweet i'm not sure if he wrote the book or not he just had a link to it what is his cult i don't know he was on cnn's religious leaders page so you just went with religious leaders really well again how are you gonna look up cult leader versus a religious leader i don't want to do all the research into all their backstories (laughs) and what horrible things they've been doing to people with all the church services and hey jesus was just a cult leader until Constantine made it the official religion of the Roman Empire. Oh, you're such a poignant comedian, Will. All right, let's do another one. Such a great weekend. Went out to the beach and binge-watched the sunset. (laughs) Comedian. Went out to the beach and binge-watched the sunset. That sounds like a... That's a cult leader. It's a comedian. That is a religious figure attempting... Because this is a person who doesn't watch television. And comedians all watch television. They're trying to com- they're trying to sound like they can connect with like the lingo. So I, yeah, like, yeah. I think it's I think it's a comedian that's just happy to be outside. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Mary? Go ahead, Mary. Stephen Colbert. <laughs> so both. Oh no, <laughs> that's a comedian. I respect. Back. <laughs> as someone who never watches any television. Or, um, <laughs> as any conservative would tell you, cult leader. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> All right, uh, last one. Oh, um, I don't feel good about that. Never <laughs> underestimate how happy you can become by minding your own business. That's a comedian. Cult leader. No religious figure wants people to not pay attention to them. Ooh. Or to their message. I Ooh, that... That rationale totally holds. Or up. this is like, or because th- like this is like a Catholic priest who is saying like, "Hey, don't go looking behind no curtains." <laughs> is, is what I feel that is. <laughs> I like that excellent. Hey, <laughs> like this. Hey, it's a Chicago, <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Chicago gathering. <laughs> hey, you know, pre- don't, don't come over here. Hey, what the? <laughs> f- what are you doing? What happened to my church? Church. <laughs> You're rolling up in your Lincoln Town car. Yeah, you can dress up a little for church, huh? <laughs> uh, Looks like a slob. Are you going to uh, follow up on some allegations here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. If any, what's in the collection plate? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you guessed it, not much today, oh? Huh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> a little light. A little light, a little today. light today. A little light, everybody. I don't know if you heard, but uh, tithing's still 10% this year. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, silly voices are fun. <laughs> can't get people in the church, and the Bulls can't close out a game seven. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who t- <laughs> is that a comedian or a cult leader? Reverend. <laughs> oh, Rev okay. Run. Yeah. Formerly of Run DMC. Yeah, Rev Run. Run. All right. Okay. CNN's religious leaders. He's right there. Hey, <laughs> don't go looking into my past when I was a rapper. <laughs> That's how Rev Run's voice. Your Rev Run impression. <laughs> yeah. This is my good pal DMC. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that was Coulter Comedian. Good trial run. Uh, we'll maybe do some research and come up with some more interesting tweets next time. Might might bring this one back after putting a little more effort into it. I don't know. What do yeah, you guys think? Yeah, you may be going to put a little more effort into it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I might have to redo the theme song. Hey. Coulter Comedian. Who tweeted this? <laughs> okay. Oh, movie reviews. Uh, I wanted to talk about some movies I saw. Is that cool with you guys? Jimmy Kerr movie reviews. Also a terrible theme song. I don't <laughs> spend a lot of I don't spend a lot of time on theme songs. Oh, well, hey, you're a busy guy. You're a busy guy. <laughs> busy guy. Uh, I went and saw Jurassic World, which just broke every record for opening weekends domestically. Is that correct? Anybody else see that? Yes. Like, Biggest opening weekend of all time. Uh, hugely anticipated film. Uh, it's getting around a 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and I enjoyed the movie. My, has anyone else seen it? Mary went to it with me. I saw the preview. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you why I don't think I'll like it. Yes. It seems like Chris Pratt's character trains velociraptors. And that him and the Velociraptors basically save the day. That if is that remotely yeah. true, then I'm probably going to not like it as much. That is partially true. Um, you can't train Velociraptors. When as soon as I saw he's training Velociraptors, I'm like, yeah, you know, like, that's... Right. I mean, that is a part of the movie. First of all, I'll say this. Chris Pratt is fantastic in it, in, like, comedy action. I mean, he was fucking born to do that. The special effects are really good. What I will say about Jurassic World, and this kind of plays into your fear there, Josh, is that this is 100% a movie that should be analyzed for what it is and not for what it's not. Meaning, this is a movie that is that was created to take you on a fun ride, but not to... Not to trick you into doing any kind of introspection. Like, the first <laughs> the first Jurassic Park movie was just a dynamic film. It's just a great story. And it the script was fantastic. The characters were good. And it's like... The dialogue was more than just <sighs> people yelling at each other. It had... Well, right. It had some... It had some... Um, some science fiction-y, you know... Uh, the the nature of humanity, significance, and gravitas to it. it. It was just a great movie. This Jurassic World is a monster movie in which humans are being chased around by big monsters, and that's kind of all it is. It never it never tries to be more than that. The villains are nefarious for no reason. You know <laughs> the the what 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 you're getting to, and this isn't a spoiler. I'm not giving too much away. There's a military guy who wants to use raptors and turn them into weapons and, like, train them to use them in war. Chris Pratt's character is arguing against that guy. And his thing is, like, we can make them do some simple tricks, but you can't train them like you could train, like, a you know, a bomb-sniffing dog or something like that. Like, you can't. Well, you want to know why Jurassic Park was so good? Was because it was an original movie. It was original thought. There were no movies like that until it came out. I mean, and I would then ar- sequels. Yeah. That's all we do anymore. We just do like rehash shit out, and then like yeah. re, you know, like a reboot is a thing now. Like yeah. rebooting a movie. So it's like, what about how, like original idea for something? Okay, you know, Pixar. Like, yeah, right. Pixar movies. That's what makes Pixar yeah. movies great. They're actually creating something. and Well, and I think there's something to be said for a difference between art entertainment 
and just a fun movie going experience. Jurassic World is fun. It's the monsters are cool and it's kind of well shot. Uh, the it pacing is good. It has no good female characters. The kids aren't annoying. Like, the kids are fine. That, that was a big problem with the first Jurassic Park movie is the kids are fucking so annoying, it almost takes you out of the film. It does not pass the Bechdel test. God, We're trying no. to figure out when there are two <laughs> female characters. The only uh, time two female characters talk is when they're on the phone and they're talking about dealing with the kids and one of them cries and she has to be called back to her meeting by the man who's next to her. Oh, yeah. God. See, yeah. I think, though, another movie you didn't like, Mary, was Mad Max. And I think that would pass the test. That's the other movie on my list. Because uh, they, I there would are... love to talk to you about how sexist that movie is based on how the women act on the screen. Okay, but does it pass the test? There is a conversation yes, between two it does. females. Right. So and maybe the test is a little faulty. But does it? No, yeah. when they when they when talk she to, talks with talking the, to the older lady. Yeah. Oh yeah. About seeds right. and shit. Calls okay. herself out and All right. yeah. people answer. That makes sense. I, I'm gonna say the same thing about Mad Max that I just said about Jurassic World. This is not an art film. It's not some it's not even a story. This is a two hour car chase on a dirt road. Intense. And if that's what you want, it's awesome because it delivers the shit out of that there is a problem with it that there's not a lot of character definition they're all all the characters are pretty one note like furiosa is like a strong female lead but there's not a lot about her other than she's really good at kicking ass well, you wouldn't have time it'd be a why, five hour movie yeah. it doesn't make sense why she's even in the role she's in well, other every other driver it. for the guys is one With of the much, white guys there are lots of action movies that have good characters right but you'd have to cut something out though wouldn't you because like yeah i mean you could have an hour and well, 10 minutes of car racing instead of two hours <laughs> there was a lot of like car chase yeah. i mean a lot one porcupine car running into somebody and blowing up is fine Five in a row, and it just takes up a lot of movie time that you could have used for dialogue and storytelling. I don't disagree with any of these points. The one thing that is just really shocking to me is that it is getting a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is amongst the elite of elite of elite scores of Especially any movie that, ever. That, Toy Story. that type of movie, like, ever has. Yeah. I mean, like, Terminator 2 has a similar score. But Terminator 2 is considered, like, Amazing one of the film. seminal sci-fi action movies ever in history. You know? Uh, there And there are, I mean, Toy Story movies get those kinds of scores. Like, it's very, very rare. So that is what's so surprising to me about it. And is, why I wanted to go see it. <laughs> right. So, anyways, I would say if you want to see a two-hour car chase through the desert, I would say go see it. Let's do some news. Joshua. 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 Bustler. News. Hello, everybody. Do you guys know what the NAACP stands for? Uh, uh I do, I don't, but I don't think I want to really say it. I don't it know right if I'm now. allowed. That's something we should associate colored. for the advancement of Turns people. out it's the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Caucasian People now. <laughs> I will admit, <laughs> didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, I, it's like the number one story, you know, like of the summer, I think, is this gal. Uh, oh, Rachel, we're talking about her. Oh, yeah, Rachel yeah. Dolezal, a professor of African studies and head of <clears throat> the NAACP chapter. In this, this is very Spoke. insensitive. The preferred term is transracial. Right. Well, that's that's becoming a popular... <laughs> phrase online due to the yeah. issue yeah i never heard of this she runs the end or she ran the uh naacp um and um she's uh basically been living uh as a black woman since the mid 2000s right and she's actually super white she's like blonde blue eyes in real life her parents are the ones that outed her and basically said yeah she's she's white yeah everybody a, a reporter confronted her but I gave you that clip we should listen to that clip oh okay is that your dad yeah that's that's my dad this man right here is your father 
right there. Do you have a question about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was wondering if uh, <laughs> if your dad really is an African American man. That's a very. I mean, I don't I don't know what you're implying. Are you African American? I don't I don't understand the question of I did tell you that yes that's my dad and he was unable to come in January are your parents I'm are they white I, and then I, she I, I, she leaves at that point now where she she just walked off now the she now, went and high she hid in a like a clothing store nearby now she has a she there was there was a the guy had a picture of a dude who looks like Charles S Dutton that she was claiming was her father. Right, on Facebook. Right. Yeah, she was claiming that was her dad. Right, and it's not. Like, her parents are, like, they look German. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now, uh, and she's she's a she's a college professor. She's in African-American studies, right? Yes. So She, she went to Howard University, <laughs> which is a predominantly uh black college and she got in I mean she's she's student. legitimately a civil rights leader like that's her thing Yeah and apparently she did a really good job at the NAACP and right. like improved a lot of things there and did a really good job <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it is it's a bizarre story and the, I mean uh, just people are going crazy about it but I mean is she transracial I mean she says she now she's resigned as the leader of the NAACP, and uh, has claimed that she just identifies as being African American, and she has she. There's another thing too, which is she has a little brother that she was claiming was her son. Only the little brother is black, and she he's has, adopted. Yeah, her parents uh, uh, adopted two black uh, boys that were her and brothers. She ended up getting custody of one or both of them, and or one of them lived with her. And she was claiming it was her son for, like, a long time. There's a lot of weird shit going on with this chick. She does seem to be trying to affect positive change and is pretty good at it. It's just, it's just a very, she has a really strange past. Yeah, is that, should, should we accept her as a culture? Should we accept her for whatever she wants to be? I mean, is this like the transgender thing? Well, well um, the one of okay. So the 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 reason the question is weird and the reason it's impossible to answer is because ultimately the goal of the civil rights movement is based around the ideology that race should be meaningless in the eyes of a society. Shouldn't matter what your race is, right? Except she has clearly decided that to her it means a great deal. And so that's, yeah, no, you, you shook your head. No, I mean, I, I would agree with like, that's what I want. Uh, you know, that's what I want it to be about, but I, it's definitely not. <laughs> right. I mean, like that type of thinking fits with, with a, with a lot of things. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think a lot of people like people, I don't want to sound, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it's just, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> I think you could say without anyone getting upset at you that statistically as a whole in the United States, since I don't know about her specific upbringing, growing up white gives you more privilege than growing up black, just as a general rule across the board. Individual right. yeah, instances are different. I don't think that's a controversial sentiment. So, right. deciding to be black later on gives you the benefit of that white upbringing. You aren't truly black even if we all decide to agree upon that she's also, had benefits that people who grew up black didn't have well it, it also just means that y her entire message is inherently shrouded in lies just the amount of disparagement that's been thrown this lady's away yeah. i'm like yeah she's a liar but everyone is liars and she did good things. Right. No, it's true. So who's worse? She's still done way more than me to advance the cause of equality in this country. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is is there a reason that it's become such a lightning rod for controversy? Fair enough. I, I'll say th I'll say this. Like I I don't really care if she wants to identify as a black person. That's fine with me. But when you're when you get a job and you get certain things because uh, you're pretending 
and you're not sincere in certain ways like she she could have said hey listen i want to work for the naacp i'm white i identify as a black person and you know i i appreciate the culture so much i want to be in it and whatever they probably would have been more accepting of that but to to pretend and and claim like on her when she applied for colleges she put that she's native american white and black like that's not true you know what i mean and somebody yeah. who is those things probably didn't get in because she was put that on there yeah. you know what i mean so be you don't have to be fake about it i appreciate Pe what you're trying to say but you're also making her the like that's the most relatable thing about what she did it's like yeah but who hasn't lied on a job application or right. like who hasn't fudged their resume a little bit like that's the most understandable part of the story <laughs> yeah I mean, I haven't, Will. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't either. Well, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't actually either, but that's because I work at Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah. Because I have integrity. <laughs> I think what we're all going to agree on with this story is that it's impo we don't have the means or the history to lock down a, de a definitive stance that we can say is the more ethically sound one. It's just very strange. I will say this. For this person, if, if I can say one, if I can make one uh, concrete ethical statement, it's that I still believe she's probably a better person than me. <laughs> Maybe. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got another story? A Virginia mother is in trouble after leaving her two young kids in a hot car with the windows rolled up while she made an appearance at a county courthouse this week. <laughs> The reason, <laughs> the reason the mother was in court uh, on charges of child abuse after leaving her kids in a hot car the previous month. <laughs> okay. Well, at that oh point, it's basically God. entrapment. <laughs> How old were the kids? Uh, six and one years old. Oh, oh, fuck. Well, that's, no, that's perfect. You have the older one to watch the little one. <laughs> right that is yeah i i sh she can have the chair <laughs> <laughs> but she was arrested no what, what, and where did this take place at a courthouse in uh virginia virginia and it's like just locked her kids in the car while she went in to face <laughs> child, child abuse, abuse charges <laughs> for yeah. locking her kids i mean that's that just that just speaks though to the idea that like the shittiest people who do the dumbest, shittiest stuff, especially to children, aren't plotting things out on a, f on a graph and making rational decisions based on statistics. They just, they, they, they just act how they act. And like the fact that this was outside of a courthouse did not factor into this woman's decision. This is just a dumb person who does awful shit. Her, and that's never, and it's not going to stop. Her, being at the courthouse facing charges uh, for child abuse was, was supposed to be a deterrent for right. what she had done. And while she's at the courthouse <laughs> See, facing those charges, yeah. you are absolutely doing the exact you are same absolutely thing. right, Joshua. It is supposed to be a deterrent. Why aren't we talking about the real issue? The real issue here, which is how our criminal justice system is failing this woman. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's it is. You see that all the time, though, like just like you could take a guy if a person is just wired a certain way. Look at Aaron Hernandez. Just because you make a guy a famous football star, you, you take a fucking thug ass murderer and you make him a famous th football star and give him a million dollars. He doesn't stop shooting people because <laughs> that's just what he does. Like he's wired that if someone spills his drink at a bar, he's going to shoot him. And the fact that he's and he shoot him in the face. And the fact that he's got millions of dollars and is a famous celebrity and lives in a mansion and drives a Porsche, like, doesn't affect isn't his the, decision. Isn't that the opposite, though? Like, you're treating it, and I understand that, like, you're trying to look at it from a rational angle, that he has more to lose. But the reality of that scenario, isn't it the opposite? Isn't it once you make that person a professional football player and give them that huge sense of power and entitlement, it feeds into the, like, attitude that would shoot someone in the face? I'm the saying bar? the opposite. I'm just saying it doesn't affect him one way or the other. I think he's just wired that way. I think All this right. guy, I think he's just a guy who will shoot someone in the face. Right. And that, and that, 
that wiring was imprinted on him probably when he was 12, and it's too late now and to so you're unwire saying, it. You're saying it's, it's I like think the genetic, mi- essentially. I, no, I'm not saying it's genetic. I'm oh. saying it's, I'm oh. saying whatever, however he was raised or whatever he went through, whatever right. his environment was, caused him to be a certain kind of person. And some of it, like, some of it is nature, some of it's nurture. I don't know the answer to that, but he is who he is. We all are who we are. Yeah, I think deterrence do work with reasonable people, but the problem is that there's a lot of people that aren't reasonable. Yeah, you, that's what I'm like, saying. M- most people, like, I don't know if you've ever wanted to kill a person, but, you know. Virtually a, all the time. Right, but a reasonable person would be like, well. Well, every, human, every person on Earth has had that thought. Right, but, you know, there's consequences to it, which deters you from actually doing it. Some, and, some comedian has that joke that's like, the fact that murder is illegal is the number one thing preventing murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Which I, I know it's like Louis C.K. or something, but it's a funny idea and you're, and that's true. It is a deterrent, but most people, well, I, I like to think that most people wouldn't murder anyway, you know, but it, it's, 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 there are some people who, who are going to murder regardless. And I, I think the millions of dollars and the entitlement might make you think that it's easier for you to get away with it. But that doesn't really affect the ethical choice, which is just, I'm going, like, because cause there's not, you can't rationalize shooting a guy in the face for knocking your drink over to bar. You can't do it. It can't be done. It's an illogical choice that only a crazy asshole does. And the same thing is true of, like, Getting busted for locking your little kids in a hot car, showing up to court, and doing the same. That woman is not able to process logic. Like, she makes her decisions not based on consequences or reason. She is just a person who is going to mistreat her kids. It's a miracle she made it to the courtroom. No matter what. Now, a lot of people will tell you that rehabilitation is a thing, but it's not for everybody, you know. Maybe it, maybe it does work sometimes. I don't know. I don't have any stats, but I just think that some people are are wired a certain way. Are they've been built a certain way, and they just don't care. Well, I'm sure she's learned her lesson and will never mistreat her kids again. Well, she is for sure going to mistreat them every day for all of their lives. Right, and then they're going to grow up to be parents that lock their kids in cars. Yeah, that's a, that's the cycle. It's very sad. Yeah. That's just how it is. Or they start telling jokes. What's your path? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got another one? <laughs> Let's talk about this dude, this dude going ham on... Uh, uh, now, you d- you did not know who Uwe I, Boll was. No, but I fell in love with him immediately. <laughs> okay, so Uwe Boll uh, will give us a one-minute history of Uwe Boll. Uh, Am I saying it right? Uh, I th- I thought it was pronounced Uvable. Uvable, it might be. Um, he's gonna say it here. Um, okay. Uh, Uvable is a film director, uh, very notorious in uh, my circle. That is to say, the nerd circle, because he's very well known for taking uh, video game properties uh, and taking a hot shit on them and then releasing <laughs> it to cinemas. <laughs> right. uh, it, it, he directed uh, adaptations of the already terrible Postal video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Uh, Dungeon Siege. Uh, what other in the name games? of the king, a dungeon siege tale, which I saw in the theater. Um, what other video game might I? Oh, God, there were others. I'd have he's to done Google a bunch, it. a bunch of first person shooters. Like I think he did. I don't know. He, he did anyway, a bunch of stuff. So this is a rant that uh, our good talentless hack Uva Ball went on because he apparently went to Kickstarter to try to fund uh his most recent film. He's trying to fund a movie Rampage Three. Uh, uh, which he did not do successfully, which shouldn't be surprising because nobody likes any of his movies. <laughs> right. So going to a f- going to a platform that's based exclusively on the goodwill of your audience wasn't going to work. So yes, overball, and uh, that is the last update. We have only four days to do with the rampage campaign, and that was my uh, he's third German. campaign now. Uh, after Poster Two failed, after Indigo Go for Rampage Three failed, and now Kickstarter failed too. And uh, basically my message is fuck yourself because that is so fucking absurd what retarded 
amateur idiots <laughs> collecting money on that absurd website you know we get approached by people like Kickstarter do it do it and you have hundreds thousands of people contacting you to make a fast dime to say I can push your uh, campaign and I get 10% of whatever you collect and it's all fucking bullshit and I will never do it in my life again for me crowdfunding is absolutely dead goodbye and it looks like nobody gives a shit about Rampage 3 so Maybe I shouldn't do it then. I have enough go uh, money to play golf till I'm dead. And I was willing to do all of this as the campaign for, <laughs> to make any money. I want to do Rampage 3 because it is an important movie. But it looks like you're easier giving $600,000 if you make a movie about some retarded wizard in the forest. Uh, or for another uh, whatever Marvel Avengers bullshit dirt. Uh, so goodbye and good for Hollywood. <laughs> okay, that was Uva Bull uh, telling us how he wanted to make Rampage 3 because it was, in his mind, an important movie. But instead, we'd rather throw our uh, collective weight behind some Avengers bullshit or some <laughs> okay. something about a, as he said, retarded wizard in a forest. <laughs> okay. I think is what he said. What I, movie is he referring to with a retarded wizard? The Hobbit? Oh, okay. Maybe. Harry Potter, just Harry, Harry Potter, Potter in a yeah. general way. Yeah, here's what here's what blows my mind about this. I, maybe this is just a guy going crazy, but I feel like this dude actually has a plan. I do too. Because no. Uva Bull famously has boxed some of his critics. And like you can go online and watch videos of him beating the shit out of people who have panned his movies. Yeah. Which are terrible. Oh shit, I just realized what I've done. <laughs> well, but but here's the thing. He knows no one likes his movies. His movies are designed to not be liked. The way Now he... I never heard this. You you told us this before we recorded the show. To explain this again. If you do like uh, do a little bit of research uh, into Uva Bull. I, I feel like I'm putting on my tinfoil hat right now. But uh, I'll, I'll cite my horses. I'll go look up my shit for this after the show. It, Uva Bull, the way he made his money on those movies, he didn't make money on his movies because all his movies failed and were huge bombs. He made his money. But he's made like 30 movies. Yeah. Because he fun the way he makes money on them is all through tax dodges and weird tax loopholes. He's producering all of us. Literally, that's what he's doing. He's doing the producer scam. Now I just for don't all of understand us. how that works. I don't really understand it either. But it has to do with the fact that he's German and the fact that like uh, old old German tax laws when they were trying to incentivize people to bring Hollywood productions to yeah. like film in Germany. Uh, he would, since his production company is based in Germany, he would film all these things. He would shoot these movies, get these huge tax breaks for doing so. And then even if they didn't make any money, just the fact that like he, I don't, again, I don't understand the literal aspect Maybe like, of how uh, the tax worked. He would make, after getting a bunch of tax breaks, the only money he probably did make was like overseas or something. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand how it works. I don't think you're wrong. There's got to be a method to his madness because otherwise he's just a crazy guy who is now fifty million dollars in debt, and that can't be the case. He says he has enough money he can golf for the rest of his <laughs> until like, he's dead. Until he's dead. <laughs> Why not? Why not do that then? <laughs> I don't understand. Well, I don't but, know. But that's the thing. He knows because it was an important film, John. Oh, sorry. Rampage <laughs> Three is an important film. <laughs> Here's the thing about it's this. It's not about some retarded wizard in the woods. Uh, so I forget. I've seen some of his movies. You should watch Postal. It's terrible in an amazing way. Yeah? Um, it's, 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 a, it's a movie that strives to be offensive and succeeds. But, like, it's... It, it's a... It's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a sci-fi original movie as a blockbuster. It's the, okay. It's the sci-fi original movie of a big budget blockbuster. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, then it's worth watching. I mean, is it like is it like Sharknado? Is it like that kind of movie? Kind of, yeah. Because like those guys make those kinds of movies. I mean, there's a production company that makes whatever Sharknado and Anaconda versus Super 
crock or whatever. Yeah. And like they know their movies aren't good, but part of their production is that they hire writers and directors who they know will make this kind of film. The, but every, the people who make those movies believe they're making good work. Like, they don't set out to make camp. Like, if you talk to the producers of those companies, they're like, this doesn't work if people try to do it. It's it's really kind of hard to find this perfect I storm. agree with that, and I don't think Sharknado worked because I think it was that. Right. And I think that they okay, sometimes well. fall into that. I, I, mean, I haven't seen it, but I think sometimes they fall into that. But, they they like, their whole thing is, like, finding... I mean, it's like a Nathan for you type deal. It only works if he finds someone who's sincere. Like, since right. like sincerity is the only thing that can make these terrible movies fun in a terrible way. Uva Bull, I think there's a sincerity to him. He like people have called me an intense guy before. This is a fucking intense dude. Yeah, he seems like the guy. Like if you were at a bar. Like, nobody would, and he walked in, everybody like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then, because it's <laughs> yeah. the guy that would just, like, drinks too much and wants to fight everybody in the bar. Oh, he's just a crazy German intense, like, he's just a madman. He's one of those guys with just endless energy and throws it all into these movies, but he doesn't quibble over details. I just think that he's, I don't know, he's like a pulp filmmaker. He just cranks out these movies one after another. And I always thought the video game thing was just because that was the easiest way to crank out a movie script in five days. It's like, find a video game, write it out, that, shoot it. Or, like, if it actually, one, does become successful and becomes very popular, at least in a group, you can go to Comic-Cons for the rest of your life. It right. seems like people are <laughs> kind of, that's a career path. People are, like, trying to be successful and, like be you know like a pop culture whatever even well, like, briefly and then yeah. you can just go to comic cons for the rest of your life well, and get paid you know ten dollars an autograph well and people watch his movies i mean he's like he's he's a famous guy you know he's not steven spielberg but like he's the ed wood of our day i mean he makes movies that people watch and they laugh at it and they make fun of him and then he beats the shit out of him, and then people <laughs> film it, put it on YouTube, and it, it gets even right. bigger. But I mean, it's it's a, it's a fun ride. He's the villain of his own life. He is. <laughs> like he he he. They did a special about him boxing his critics, and there's videos of him beating the shit out of people who made fun of his movies. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. That was him building the Uva Bowl brand. Yeah, I and I feel it. like this. But he. But here's the thing. I feel like that's what he's doing here because he knows audiences don't want or like his movies. They watch him out of, like, hate and spite. And he knows that before he goes to try to Kickstarter or Indiegogo yeah. a movie. What I wonder is, like, where's the – like, what's the sinister plan? Well, part of crazy is that sometimes even with the plan, you, you can convince yourself that it's real. Right. I, I think he's one of those guys who he probably knows this at the outset and he walks around. Okay. Like, how can I make a dollar off of this? But by the time he's finished pacing around his house for a week and like just drinking whiskey, he, you know, or what, or, or Jeb and beer, he, Shops. he comes out of that thinking like, no, fuck everybody for real. Like, I think he's probably <laughs> that guy. Well, fuck your Kickstarter. <laughs> Like he he was mad at Kickstarter for <laughs> yeah. for just doing whatever they well, do. Well, he said he said that he he said something weird too, which is he said that Kickstarter came to him yeah. and was like fund your movie through us, which is not a thing that I thought Kickstarter no, did. I bet you it's I, not. I bet right. you people. I think people were fucking with him and they were sending links to yeah. Kickstarter to say, hey. People we, because you said he got hundreds of thousands of people were saying you need to do Rampage three. Yeah, I think hundreds of thousands of people were fucking with him. That may and have been anonymous. Like all got together to try to convince Uva Bull <laughs> <laughs> that they would fund a movie through Kickstarter so that they could not do that. That's funny. <laughs> I hope that's true. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uva Bull. Give us come, a call. Come on the Jimmy Curve. <laughs> I mean... Jimmy will fight you. We don't have a... 
huge German fan base. I'll do both, man. Like, I will support your movie. I liked, in the name of the king, a dungeon siege shale. I enjoyed the movie. I legitimately had fun watching it. Ray Liotta is an evil sorcerer. Jason Statham playing a character whose name was Farmer. (laughs) Who is a farmer and then sets out to avenge the death of his kid, I think, by killing the king or the evil wizard. It's not great, but it was fun as fuck. What was Farmer's kid's name? (laughs) I don't remember. Was it Kid? I, I might have been at 10. What, I don't even remember. At what age does your name change from kid to farmer? Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> he was his character name was Farmer. And that's all anyone ever called him. Oh, a fucking Ron Perlman is in it because, of course, Ron Perlman was in it. Dude, I go see <laughs> In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale. I saw it in the theater. It was I was just like, this is just a Dungeons and Dragons movie, basically. I mean, it's just a magic and wizards and, like, dragons, and I'm in. Uh, yeah, it's... Oh, I mean, if you want to sit around and poke holes in that movie, we're going to be here a while. But, like, if you just... I mean, it's fun, it's fun to watch. It's all about pacing sometimes in some of these movies. Like, you never get bored. So, uh... Oh! And, uh... And, uh... Matthew Lillard as the king? <laughs> <laughs> spectacular shaggy oh shaggy is the king he's the king all right he's the king I, dude, it's sorry uva like i will praise your movies and fight you i'm just saying that right <laughs> now like it'll be a gr- we'll it will get drunk we'll fight and then we'll watch your movies and it'll be awesome <laughs> <laughs> i'll enjoy every minute of that <laughs> that sounds like a great weekend uh, so as soon as Uva, oh, well, fuck it. I'll play around the golf with you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a proud man. I have a feeling that's a very aggressive game of golf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited to find out. Uh, we're going to get Uva Bull. We're going to get Logan Shoeless. I, ca- I tried contacting him. Did you? Yeah. How did, did it go? I haven't. I, he hadn't been on Facebook since uh, June 8th. What, what did you do? You just contact him on Facebook? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. It was just January 8th. I think it was January 8th <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I sent him a message and just said, hey, man, like, and I sent him a link to the show. So <laughs> awesome. I was like, you're on this show and, you know, we don't bash you or anything. We yeah. thought it's kind of cool if you could come on or whatever. So we'll see. The, uh, hey, w- the word's out. Uh, we'll contact Uva. And uh, see if he gives us a call. And, uh, you know, maybe we can go through our good friend Sebastian Schroeder. He probably knows him. He probably has to know him. Yeah. Germ- Germany's a small country. Yeah, it's not that big. Uh, so, uh, all right, man, that's it. Let's do uh, some plugs. you guys have anything coming up? Yeah. It's your plug. I, uh, I'm going to be on talk about it, uh, Thursday at Knickerbockers at nine o'clock. In Very Lincoln, cool. Nebraska. Uh, on, that's the day this comes out. The next day, Friday, I'm going to be on comedy, uh, okay parties, uh, battle Royale. Oh at yeah. Nine o'clock at, in, uh, Omaha at, in the, uh, the waiting room. Uh, no. Oh no. It's the a the, lounge. The lookout lounge. Lookout lounge. Yeah. That's right. They moved it to the lookout lounge, formerly known as the hideout. Now the lookout lounge. Yes. Your first uh, battle, yes? Yeah, not ready at all. Oh. Gotta do that. It's fun. Yeah. You'll have a good time. Will? Uh, I'm also going to be on Taco About It, so go eat some tacos with your uh, favorite sad, fat person. Maybe I'll do my no, jokes. No, I'm not going to be there. Uh, uh. Um, maybe I'll do my jokes about how being fat is how I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'll add a little bit of extra spice to it, I feel. Um, or when, what day is this coming out? Thursday the 18th. Okay, well then, uh, a, a week from Saturday. I, I'll have to plug this next week too. A week from Saturday is the Will Doherty Loves Company show. I don't know who's on it yet. Mm. I'll be doing stand-up comedy at, uh, it's called Raw Materials. Uh, che- the description of the show is check out a handful of comedians talking about a number of topics and it's all unfiltered comedy. If you are easily offended, this probably isn't a show for you. Now I don't really do a lot of blue material. 
So I'm trying to scrap together my most offensive bits. <laughs> I'm going to try and do them at the show. If, if you need a hand, I can add some <laughs> dirty words into any joke. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably going to be like, I'll probably just do my normal joke about how, how weird soccer is, except I'll just call it fucking soccer, you know, <laughs> and that'll be, that'll be it. So back line at 10 o'clock this Saturday, that's what I'm doing. Uh, is that it? Flip. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. This has been a fun solo ride. We are just, we've just been the three lone wolves today. The three Lone, lone Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm the Johnny Depp Lone Ranger. <laughs> I'm Tonto. And so for co-host Joshua Vossler. Goodbye. And sidekick Will Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> and future guest Uva Bowl. <laughs> I'll <laughs> wieder sagen. This is this is when your host Jimmy Putnam saying. Uh, I guess the message I'm saying is fuck you and uh, fucking uh, starter, fucking fuck Kickstarter starter, uh, and I am fucking done with it. So auf Wiedersehen. Thank you. Guys. I don't have enough money to play golf once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening and good night.